Hey, so how would you respond if someone said that these prophecies, like the 70 weeks prophecy, inspired Jesus to start his movement, right? Like uh, he read it and he thought this is the time to, the Messiah is here. And there were a bunch of movements like that. Like the life of Brian thing. <laughs> People expected the Messiah at the time. Well, I mean, I think there's all kinds of uh, things that, I mean, it's not like there's just a couple of these. There's so many prophecies throughout the Old Testament that it's more than just, hey, could we find a dude born in this town who could who could act this way? I mean, it's a, there's a lot more than that, right? There's a, there's a certain genetic lineage that has to happen. Uh, I mean, there's certain there's certain. Let me give you an, let me give another example. I mean, um, there's the prophecy not just about Jesus, but that the world would honor his mother. So did were they did they did the did they trick everybody into honoring uh, Mary? I mean Jesus Mary prophesies I mean, all all uh, they will all, everybody will call me blessed. I mean they read those things and they thought we're supposed to do this stuff, right? <laughs> like they thought he was a messiah and they said that they're supposed to honor his mother, so they said we got to honor Mary because <laughs> it's I'm not no, I'm saying I'm saying the prophecy specifically says that the nations will call her that. Did they did they trick everybody into that too? When Jesus says that when I'm lifted up, I will draw all nations to myself. Do you not understand that's a prophecy? So that it's not just a question of can we find a guy like in life of Brian who's born in this village and can act this way. There's all of these other uh, amazing elements that also are part of this. For example, all of these prophecies that talk about the nations worshiping the God of Israel. How would all the Gentile nations worship the God of Israel? And if that does occur, it's said to be one of the key signs that the Messiah has come. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess the Jews would say that people aren't really worshiping the God of Israel because they'd say that they're going to... Well, it doesn't, matter. it doesn't matter what the Jews yeah, say. Yeah, right, right. It's, I, I get it. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking... Yeah, and about the lineage, some people would argue that they constructed... That they didn't really know his lineage. And these later Christians came up with these genealogies... Sort of okay, so now, now you're just lying. now you're just asserting all this stuff. What's your actual evidence for that? You're saying they would say that some people would well, say who? What are the, you talking the, about? The genealogy are contradictory, right? I mean, I know there's explanations, proposed explanations, but but there's an apparent contradiction in in between Matthew and Luke. Well, I mean, so now it's a question of do you accept the uh, the arguments for the reconciliation of those things, right? So what's what? So you have a worldview, I guess, of what? What's your position? Agnostic. Uh, on everything or, or just on theism? Uh, I guess I lean towards a kind of, you know, academic skepticism where there's just probabilities. Uh, of like everything is probabilities like or what do you mean? Cicero. I mean, we can't really be completely 100% sure about anything, but we can have reasons to believe certain things are more likely than their opposite. Okay, what about that? Can we be sure of that? Uh, no, but it's more likely than not. <laughs> we can't be 100% sure. It's just more probable than not. Okay, so we now, can't... What about that? What about that phrase itself? Can you be sure of that? No, it's just more likely than not. That's, that's the point. Okay, so <laughs> you see you're caught in... Yeah, now you're caught in a regress. You're in an infinite regress of trying to get out of making 100% absolute statements by throwing another one out there and another one, in which case the whole thing crumbles. And there's no reason to believe anything we're saying. You're saying. Um, is that? I mean, it's just—it's not practical to be a pyrrhonist, right? It's not practical not to believe in anything. <laughs> That's the problem. Well, but well, the point—the point. You just don't have any good reasons. The point is that you don't have any good reasons to believe in anything at all, much less agnosticism. How do you not believe in agnosticism? If you don't believe in anything at all, I'm saying you don't have agnostic. a good, you don't have a good reason to tell us that agnosticism is what we ought to believe. You just refuted your own basis for agnosticism. Isn't it? So, what is someone supposed to believe as a default, so to speak? I mean, if I'm if oh, we're just showing the argument. absurdity of the non-theistic worldview, which is what you appear to hold, that it it's, makes knowledge impossible. It's a defeater for knowledge. 
maybe you can't justify all the knowledge you have. You can know exactly why you no, have No, you can't it. justify any knowledge is the point. Any claim you make, given... Um, so why would I listen to you know, about your... Hard. Why would I listen to your arguments about your account of history and the Hebrews and Jewish Messiah and all this revelation and whatnot when... I don't have any kind of coherent argument from you about how knowledge is even possible. I don't think you have an explanation that's any better. Uh, well, I, I don't from the outset propose things I mean, that I don't from the outset propose things that make knowledge impossible and you do. So that's I'm in a much better position. I mean, someone could argue that your beliefs also seem kind of absurd in many ways because the world seems to be, I mean, this is all stuff that I didn't come up with, but the world seems very unjust, for example, right? Like the wicked prosper and the good people suffer. So this idea that you've got a God. And what, monotheistic, and what is your standard for justice? It's an internal critique of your view. I'm not saying, I'm not taking a an, an internal critique. An internal critique is not a standard for justice. Yeah, but I'm saying your your own worldview seems. You're, but you're not you're not in a position to critique my worldview when you don't have a basis for knowledge at all. Because you're using things that are unjustified on your worldview, like logic. What's your account of logic? Um, I don't even need that if it's an internal critique. It's like you can tell. No, you do, you you, so you do need that. So you can't even do an no you can't you can't do an internal critique without relying on something like a principle of logic you can tell a protestant for example that soul scripture is not found in scripture you don't need to be able to believe in scripture to see that now that's a false analogy because doing an internal critique still presupposes some usage of logic to make the that he left. No, I just need to use your logic. I don't even need to. There is no such thing myself, as my. Right? There's no such thing as my logic. That's not. A, that's not even my logic. No, logic is not my system. Logic is a universal category that's used for all argumentation. So you're absolutely wrong. Do you understand that to make a critique, even if it's an internal critique, you're still assuming logic. You could be arguing against logic by saying that logic has, by making an argument that logic has no foundation, for example. Correct. Yeah. Aristotle points out that that's self refuting. But that's not a justification for logic, which you're. Um, I'm not saying I'm just finding logic. I'm saying even if I can't explain certain things. No, you can't like, explain. I you're not even missing. You're not, you're, not, you're not getting. You can't make sentences. You're not in a position to justify the usage and making of sentences. It's even more radical than that. So why should I listen to anything that proceeds from your mouth when your worldview has no account for logic, sentences, meaning at all? I mean, most people would say that... I, I, I'm appealing to most people. Not like, practical? I want to know, I mean, what do you say? So like, that's a fallacy. Most people would say this. Most people, what do you say? What I would say is that it seems like you're just sort of trying to reframe the debate. Like, whenever someone asks you a question and you say, well, what's your worldview? Uh, I mean, this is a specific stuff. I mean, that's the transcendental argument. That's the argument that we make. So I'm not trying to reframe it into something other than the very thing we always argue here. Okay, so let's assume... Do you think that the transcendental argument can prove Christianity just by itself? Yeah, I think ultimately it logically leads to that, yeah. But why? Why can someone believe in a kind of God that would allow you to have knowledge without being Christian? Because not any kind of, quote, God does the actual work of grounding and justification. Yeah, but we can get more specific. It could even be a triune God. Well, be, that's all right. no, at that, at, that, at that point, it would just be a facsimile, a copy and paste of our position. But it wouldn't involve belief in, full, in the fullness of Orthodox Christianity, and so it wouldn't be Orthodox. Yeah, but the right? argument is for the whole paradigm. But if you, if you think that you can prove metaphysically that we need a try on God and the essence energy distinction and all that stuff, someone could be convinced of that using your logical arguments, but not be convinced by the historic 
truth of Christianity. Again, we've addressed all this stuff a million times. The position is an argument for the entire worldview, including the historical account of Christianity, the Incarnation. It's an entire worldview argument. It's not just an argument for the Trinity. Uh, okay. Well... He left. <laughs>